Hey guys, so what I'm going to do today is install the Cooler Master 212 Evo heatsink. I also bought an additional outtake fan for it, so I'll show you how to put that on as well. Here is my CPU temperature, and this is during web browsing, loading up Cubase or Sony Vegas Pro. This is rendering a video. So as you can see, I sped the video up a bit, but uh, the temperature is rising quite a bit. The fan's running extremely fast. This is off the stock CPU fan. As you can see, the CPU temperature is going to shoot right up to 65. It probably goes over. I'm not sure, but that's a little high for me for a regular basis. Now this isn't exactly a small fan, so before you purchase it, I'd recommend talking to the people at your computer store, wherever you plan on buying it, and asking if it'll fit into your case. I'm putting it into a Phantom 410 N2 XT case. So we'll begin by taking it out of the package. And a common thing you should check before pulling any fans off is the direction. Now the direction arrows, it's a little hard to see, are right there to show you that it's an intake fan. Alright, now to install the additional fan, you get these two retainer clips. Make sure I want this fan as an outtake, so I want air blowing through this. This is how it'll get connected. So air comes in here, blows through, and comes out this end. Take these retainer clips, clip them onto the side that's going to be bringing air in. Oh, wrong way. Oh, wrong way. So your heat sink will come with four black screws. These are the ones you use to attach the fan. You just start screwing the screws in one by one into the four holes on the retainer clips. They are a little tight, so don't hesitate to use a little bit of force, but you only need to make sure they're nice and snug. You are screwing them into plastic. This is a nice closer view for you guys. I usually screw in each side, then tighten, it, tighten them up. Now, to put the fan on, I kind of clip it on, put one side on takes a little bit of force and just kind of push it on and there you go give it a pull and you know it's connected taking the fans off basically what I do little clips raise it up slightly and it comes off so here is my case phantom 410. There's my stock CPU, and I'm, which I am going to be removing right now. Now, if your case has one of these back panels, there's actually four screws that need to be removed. They are on the other side. Which, if we look in here, got one, yeah, got two, three, four. You need to take those out. So, for the socket AM3. This board here just goes on those four holes there. So what I did is I held the plate, put this one screw in on the other side. I put the top ones in first because they'd hold the plate in place. As I did that, they stayed in. They get four of those hexagonal nuts. Each goes on one side or one screw. I just put them on hand tight first so I know the plate's in place, the screws are in place and then after you, there's actually a tool that comes with it that you just use a Phillips screwdriver on, put over the nut, tighten it up. I tightened it up in a star pattern and just make those nice and snug as well. 
Oh, there are three little notches here. I don't know if you can see that right there. What you need to do is basically push the pin up and bring it over one. The reason for this is because with the AM3, though that's the way they line up. All three, four of those screws need to be shifted over one position. As you can see, there's just a little gap between on each side of the screw. That's kind of how it looks, and this is when it's placed on top of the CPU. So in order to get this through here, there's a little hole right there where that pin needs to go through. So it depends on how you want this set up, but you basically slide it right in there. Put her down. So you want to start by putting in thermal paste. So you don't have to use as much thermal paste as I did. Uh, once you put the heat sink on, it actually spreads. But take your time putting the heat sink on, line it up thoroughly. Um, I initially just lined up the two screws to make it easy on myself and slightly tighten them. And then it takes a little bit of force to actually line up the back screws once you have these started because the heat sink's now on an angle. So be careful when you're doing it. Make sure you're not stripping the screw by putting it in on an angle. I lined it up as best as I could and I made sure that on the other side after those two were started that I had it lined up thoroughly and they went in very easily once all four were started then I went in a star pattern and tightened up each one it's very simple you'll have some play in the heat sink as you're doing it which is okay it makes it a little easier for you so don't hesitate there but yeah just tighten them up till they go nice and snug So as I was tightening those down, they actually feel like once they get to the bottom they lock in place. There's a little bit too much thermal paste on there as well. I would like the cool air to come in this way and blow out in here so I got an exhaust fan. So, so basically start one side of the fan and then it'll take a little bit of effort to pull down. My light falls here as you'll see but yeah just push it give it a nice pull and it will clip into place same with the other side kind of started on an angle I lined up the height that's what's taking me so long here and then again you just squeeze it together and it will clip into place nicely And there's the light again. So that's overall the whole thing. It stands out very high. As you can see I have just enough clearance. You know about half an inch there from where my panel will go on. So make sure your case can actually support it before you just go out and buy it, slap it on and then realize you can't put your side on. And power. So I mean it's running, this is right off boot, and it sounds fairly loud with the case open. Kinda understandable, you got two fans running. That's an outtake fan on the back, so it's pulling air in, and blowing the hot air out into the outtake fan. There's my fancy case with my LEDs. If you remember earlier in the video I showed you what the temperature was with the stock CPU fan rendering a cute uh, Sony Vegas video for about three minutes it went up to 65 degrees here it is idling for about an hour at 36 degrees CPU fan is about 1100 which is a third of what it, the stock fan was running at um, once I start rendering a video in Sony Vegas and in Cubase I mix a song the fan speed stays at about 1400 as opposed to 4000 and 
temperature stays at about 42 compared to what it was before which is a great improvement with this cooler um, currently my computer has been running for f four or five hours and the temperature with working on this video is about 43 degrees and that's with you know running audio software video software so it's pretty amazing I give it a thumbs up for the Cooler Master 212